The Saints collapse in Green Bay. 17-0 lead going into the fourth quarter. Things are looking good. I'm sitting in my kitchen. I'm like, what is everybody's beef with Dennis Allen? Like, why does nobody like this guy? This team's about to be 3-0. They're getting Alvin Kamara back. Things are looking good. The offense moving the ball. The defense pitching a shutout. They barely allowed any touchdowns all year. And then Derek Carr goes to the locker room with an injury. And the fourth quarter happens. Green Bay scores 18 points unanswered and wins the game 18-17. to Here's what I'm saying, though. Do not blame the defense for the loss. I know they gave up 18 points. I know that Green Bay on three consecutive possessions put up points. They had back-to-back -to -back touchdowns. And they came back and won the game with the offense, of course. Don't blame the defense, though. They shut down the Packers through three quarters. They played good enough ball for the Saints to win this game, basically sleepwalking in the fourth quarter. And, well, the Saints offense did sleepwalk in the fourth quarter. And they still almost won the game. They had Jordan Love at the point where he was just like this. Somebody catch it. And they picked him off. That is, like, Green Bay had no answers. They were at the point of it being their last resort to just huck it downfield. <laughs> and he overthrew the guy by 10 yards. Like, the Saints' safety ran the route for him, basically. That is basically what the situation was. And then Jordan Love flipped a switch and found a new version of himself in the fourth quarter. Like, you've got to give credit at a certain point to what Green Bay did in that fourth quarter. Like, that offense just clicked. Jordan Love was finding receivers, drawing penalties, moving the sticks, piecing together drives. He made some great plays individually, finding a receiver open somehow, some way on that two-point conversion while he was rolling this way and just kind of burp, and found a receiver there. And then Jaden Reed had an unbelievable diving catch. The game-winning uh, or game-tying touchdown, what ended up being the go-ahead score, that was an unreal catch as well against tight one-on-one -on -one coverage there. So you've got to give a little bit of credit to the Packers. Like, I know that that offense looked anemic in the first three quarters, but they woke up in the fourth and really – it was just a perfect storm between Carr getting hurt, the Packers finally finding some ways to put up some points. And I think that offense deserves some of that blame. And I don't want to get too deep into this because I still got another segment I'm going to do about this offense, specifically the offensive line, which was just absolutely terrible. Um, but you didn't execute and play winning football in the fourth quarter. You had some stupid penalties. The offensive line didn't play well. You had a false start. Michael Thomas literally held a Packers DB's arm on a run play right in front of the official. He goes, I didn't do anything. It's the most obvious penalty in the world. Like, the defender's like this, and he's getting – it's like literally like his hand stuck in the wall. Like, I don't even know. Like, that was just stupid because Taysom Hill had a 15-yard carry, which would have given the Saints a first down, and they were hurting for first down conversions, I guess you could say, in that fourth quarter. That wiped one off the board because of that holding penalty. As I said, the offensive line gets a false start on a second and four. And what is the last thing you want to do when already your offensive line is not playing well and you got a backup quarterback in the game? Get penalty yardage and get behind the sticks. And that's what that kind of penalty did. As far as Jameis Winston goes, like people in the break room downstairs sipping coffee, they're like, oh, he's terrible. This team's never going to win with him. This, that, and that. It's probably what everybody's saying on social media as well. He is not that bad. I watched the film back for a second time. I watched some plays back for four and five different times. He's not a bad quarterback. The things that stopped this offense from producing in the fourth quarter are not his fault. Sure, some plays, you know, maybe he got rid of the ball too quickly and he had a receiver open. But you got to think about the situation of the game. You know, do you want to take a sack and get pushed out of field goal range? No. Do you want to just take a sack, period? No. Do you want to give your receiver a chance, uh, you know, on a jump ball one-on-one, -on -one, your best receiver? Yeah. So I think Jameis Winston played fine. There's certainly things that you could nitpick and be like, ah, I wish he did this and this. But, you know, it's not his fault that a receiver gets a holding penalty, that an offensive lineman jumps and picks up a false start, or that the offensive line just doesn't block for him and he gets sacked. Also, some questionable decisions here. We had a third down and three late in the game there with Tony Jones in the backfield, and the Saints decided to pass. Got shut down, and they had to punt it back. 
Tony Jones ran crazy against the Panthers and has proven that he can get those critical yards you need. So why not give him a chance on the ground there? I don't know. I mean, you go either way with that one, but that's just my two cents there. Uh, here's the point. You're up 17-0, sure. Packers are coming back. 17-3, 17-11. You need one drive to win the game. Any points wins the game. They didn't have that drive. Missed a field goal. And here, here's the sequence of events. Tragic sequence of events. Here we go with the Saints. Three plays, punt. Green Bay field goal. Five plays, punt. Green Bay touchdown. Now they're within one score. Three plays, punt. What happens? Green Bay scores another touchdown. They take the lead. And then New Orleans misses a field goal. Punt, field goal. Punt, touchdown. Punt, touchdown. Missed field goal. That's your game right there. That's it. Nothing else needs to be said. That can't happen in the fourth quarter. I don't care who's playing quarterback. And look, one last thing. 46-yard field goal for Blake Groupie, the rookie. I know it's a big spot for him. It's his first year in the league. You've got to make a 46-yard field goal. Like, it is expected of you in the NFL to make a 46-yard field goal. College, sure. You know, I mean, you got a guy that can make it, great. This is the NFL. You're getting paid a couple million dollars just to put a football through two poles. You've got to make it. And I backed up this claim with some stats. Don't worry. There are 16 NFL kickers that are perfect between 40 and 49 yards this year. Now, I can't say they've kicked many of them, but 16 is half the league, basically. So you are expected to make a field goal between 40 and 49 yards. It's not a gimme, but it's an expectation that you make it, especially to win the game. You sent Will Lutz to Denver. You brought in Blake Groupie. Or I guess you kept Blake Groupie, the rookie. You had confidence in him. He's got to nail that field goal. If he hits the field goal, everything I just said, throw it in the trash. Does not matter because you won the game. But he missed it, so we got to talk about it. So there you go. Saints are 2-1. and one which is better than I thought they would do without Kamara, but still, you should be 3-0. I mean, it was your game to lose, and, well, you lost. So, there you go.